Hey, mate, thank you very much for joining us. Um, listen, tell me, what are you up to right now? What, what's happening these days, other than the COVID and being in, 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 in isolation? Well, again, just in lockdown, really just abiding by the rules, um, doing a lot of homeschooling, actually. You know, I've, uh, uh, you are learning or your kids are learning? You, you know, it's, 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 the scary thing is, it's actually, I'm the maths teacher. I, I do enjoy maths, right? Uh, Cherie's the, uh, the English teacher and um, science and all that, we usually lead to the older two, right? Yep. But I, I, I've always loved math. And it's actually quite refreshing because when you're going back to it, you're kind of starting back from the start again. And I've just relearned all my fractions and divisions and, 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 and everything else you could possibly imagine about math. I'm actually very good at now. So I actually enjoy, I don't, I don't actually mind, I, I enjoy doing it with my daughter. And I actually get, the, I get happy when she actually does it and she understands it. You know, it's, it's enjoyable. So is there, in, in, during lockdown, I mean, it's that biggest question all the time. People say, you know, is there something that you found out about yourself that you didn't know? So is that, is that the one thing that you're actually a little bit surprised that you would enjoy it so much? Look, don't get me wrong. If I had a choice, I wouldn't be homeschooling, you know, because it is tough. I'm not going to lie. And, and I, I take my hat off. I take my hat off to, to, to people that are working full-time jobs and coming home to do schooling because, look, I, I, I get that the schools are all closed down and all that, but when you've got to do your maths, English, and then you've got to do projects and all this kind of stuff, it takes the whole day out. Because yeah, I don't know what they do at school, but if your daughter doesn't get one question, I don't leave that question until she actually fully understands it. And then if you've got a school of 15 that don't understand it, you've got to individually do it. I don't know how they do it. But I do get a bit of freedom as well. And I do walk outside and I'm into gardening as well at the no moment. Way. Are you? Yes. Uh, yes. Veggies? I'm, I'm, I'm planting veggies, um, herbs and little flowers. Nice. Nice. Yes. I, I, I have to admit, I have as well. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite rewarding. Yeah, you know, looking at it. I mean, I've only started off on a, on a, on a little one because I didn't want to get the, the whole lot, and then not, I wanted to see how far I could go. So I've only got a little one. I've grown three lettuces, radishes, beetroot, uh, a pan, two pansies, uh, parsley, chilies, and I'm waiting for my basil. Nice, yeah. very yes. good. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Thank very, you. very good. Um, uh, what have you What have you learned from your managerial experience? Now looking back. What have I learned? That it's a, it's a fickle game. You know, you, you can't please everybody. I mean, my experience is, look, if, 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 if we take the, the coaching at Watford, I mean, even though I was in charge, um, I had a different role to play. So it was a role about getting the best out of individuals and getting them up promoted into the first team. And like I said, I had two years there, which were two wonderful years, and I got five players to make their, their debut which was fantastic. I think my job was done there and I felt like I wanted to move on into coaching. And then when I went into Crawley, I didn't know what to expect. I was excited. I, had, I, I, knew, I knew my plan. Don't get me wrong. I knew how I wanted to play. I knew my structure. I knew everything. But obviously, I didn't know everything else, you know, about the, obviously the involvement with, you know, talking to, to, to players. Even though I talked to my players, but you, you, you get the odd one that, you know, will disagree with you. You know, you, you get the odd one that just doesn't turn up to training. You know, you, you get the odd one that always turns up late. Doesn't matter how many times you tell him, time training starts at 10, he'll still turn up late. Or you get someone that, you know, is always on the phone or has got other problems. You know, these are the kind of things that was, I was experienced that was completely different to when I played because I only had to worry about myself. Now I have to worry about a team. And then, you, and then as you're worrying about the team, you've got to worry about your, your owner. And then you've got to worry about your directors and then you've got to worry about the staff. And then you've also got to worry about your fans. You know, the, I, I suppose the big thing about me was when I played the game, I always respected my fans. I, I always respect fans because we wouldn't have football without fans. But I enjoyed my fans when I played. As a, as a coach, even though I applauded them and, and you know, I thanked them, I, I, I suppose after games, I'd, I'd walk straight in, for example. But I'd always shake everybody's hand in the tunnel. But I think nowadays, Fans want to see that coach interact with everything like, and I, and I felt well, it's not about me, it's about my team. So if my team, you know, uh, is having that kind of, kind of fun and you know applauding, let them enjoy it. It's not about me. I don't want. It's it's about them. But I think a club that I've I've learned, especially with the, my, my two clubs that I've kind of been with, the fans see you as part of the team. 
you know, so when they celebrate, you should be out there. You know, when, when they're not out there, you should still be out there as well. So that's something that I've, I've kind of learned that I've got to take in as well is not to kind of not separate myself. I've got to be the team on just on that little bit, because when you talk about training and all that, the, the details I, I pay attention to is for me, I second to none. But like I said, it's just the little things I suppose I've got to kind of take and make better. So the, the actual, not the football side of it, it's all the off field, all the other bits that you need to, that's been a big challenge manager. Is that probably been the biggest challenge for you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yes. Because it's something that I've probably never experienced before. Cause like I said, as a player, you're only looking after yourself and you go out there, you train, you, you do yourself and, and, and you worry about your performance. Yes, it's a team game, but you, as long as you perform at your best, you're given the best for your team. Then you can go in there, you celebrate, you do whatever you've got to do. But as, like I said, as a, as a manager, I kind of separated myself for when my team was doing well and let them celebrate where I think they want everyone to be as one. And I've just got to get, get used to that, you know, which shouldn't be too hard. It's, it's you know, it's, it, it's nice to go out there and be applauded if you've done well. So it shouldn't be too hard, but that's an experience that I found difficult, you know, managing everything else outside of football. So those, the first two clubs where you, you've actually been the boss, so you've been the main man, any regrets since like, can you look back now, you've had time to, to sort of evaluate your experience? None whatsoever. Because if, if you look at my Crawley career, we were at the start of the year when I took over, Everyone wrote Crawley off. They were second favourites to go down. We ended up just outside the playoffs. We ended up finishing 14th, which was amazing for the club. Uh, the last couple of years before that, they were always floating around 20th, 19th. So we got the highest position possible. Uh, I started to rebuild, had a good pre-season. I think we were six, six games into the season, sitting on top half of the table, looking comfortable, playing the exact way because the way you wanted to play was it takes time and my team started to get that connecting especially with the, the players that I got in through the summertime they grew the squad in bigger and made them play better and they understood exactly what I wanted a lot quicker so the the way that Crawley was moving forward was was excellent but then I had an opportunity you know to to move to a, a club where the the heritage is second to none you know I mean you, you're talking about Juventus took the same colours as Notts County you know people you know haven't, haven't even probably heard of Notts County you know but everyone's heard of Juventus but this is the kind of heritage that they had beautiful stadium nice looking training training ground and when you have the owner come up to you and just say look I want my team to play exactly like your team you know but I want that all the way through up through my academy and all that that's what I want can you deliver it I said yeah I can but it's going to have to take time. You know, it just can't happen at the moment. But you have bigger problems. At the moment, you are sitting 24th in League Two, looking to, you know, after six games, you haven't won a game and you're sitting relegation. So you're going to have to put priorities first, get your first team in order first. Then we can start backtracking and looking at the, 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 the other setups. But let's concentrate on the first team. And I think he just wanted to, to plough everything in. I mean, he did all what he wanted to do. And I came into... A, I came into a situation which I, I knew I could handle. Uh, I think out of the, the time I was there, I still got the best record there, which is, uh, which is funny. I mean, look, I, I, left, I left them out of relegation and we looked, we looked well. Yes, you can cry about results uh, and we were unlucky about one or two results, but I felt the team were only one or two, one or two moments away from really clicking and destroying. I mean, I was coming off games where we had 30 shots and the opposition had one shot and we lost 2-1 and because we scored no goal. And it's like yeah. things like that. And, and you know, and you've been in games where you can go through rough patches, but as long as the, the, the work ethic there, everyone's working, everyone's pulling together, it's going to turn. It's going to turn. And it was turning. But unfortunately, um, he didn't like the I – don't, I don't know what he didn't like, to be honest with you. I mean, I suppose the other thing I've, I've got to look is I do stand up for myself. You know, I, I will say – when it comes to football, you know, I, I won't tell a business, I wouldn't walk into a, a business room that I know nothing about and tell the owner or tell the, tell the, the manager, no, 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 you've got to do it like this because I've read a book and yeah. this book says you've got to do it like this. You know, I would never do that because it's, it's out of my field. And I, I just don't think, 
um, the the owner at the time, Alan Hardy, Alan, Alan Hardy, liked the fact that I would tell him the truth because at the end of the day, these were none of my players. I'd brought in one or two free players because I had injuries and I had to plug up a few little holes. And as far as I'm aware is, is that I was dealing with his stuff. So I had to control that. But like I said, he just, I don't know. Honestly, it's, uh, there, there, there's rumours of what really happened. But like I said, I'm, I'm, there are only rumours. So it, it's disappointing, but I have no regrets. So you were linked to a couple of A-League clubs. Um, any interest there for you? Have you got... I mean, it's been a while now since you've been last in coaching. Why, where do your, what's your objective? What, what are you thinking right now? Anywhere? Apparently, apparently I, I read an article. Apparently, I'm not ready yet for the A-League. Okay. Not, I, haven't, I haven't got experience enough. And then I've just seen Grant Brebner being given the Melbourne Victory job and some other young coach being given a job. I yeah. can't remember who. So I'm surprised at that. I'm surprised at that. That Look, at the end of the day, if, you, if, if people want you, they'll make a phone call they'd get in contact with you. So people can write all they like, but I've had no offers or no interest. So I can't really, you know, um, give you an answer to that. But, but if you did get a call and everything was right, of course you wouldn't you, say... Of course you would. Oh, you yeah. know, of course you, you wouldn't say, well, you'd have to make sure everything's right, uh, first and foremost. So, and if that, if that was right, then of course. I mean, I think it's a fantastic league. I think it's a, a unique league. You know, because it's, don't get me wrong, there's, there's positives and there's a, a, a negatives. I mean, the big, biggest negative for me is the fact that there's no relegation. So Is that the one thing you would change? If, you had, if, I, you had if, 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 if I could, if I could, I think that's the one thing. Because I just think then you would have committed players all the way to the end of the season. And I just don't, like, when I was there playing, we'd play a team that wasn't going to make the playoffs. So all of a sudden, they'd play four up front. And you're going for a playoff position and you're thinking, well, if you're about to get kicked out of this relegation because you're coming last, you wouldn't be playing like this. But because you're going to be in the season next year, you're just playing free, free will and you're causing us problems where it shouldn't be like that. There should be a... Obviously, if you win, great. You're the champions. If you lose, there should be a punishment. I'm sorry. And I, I just think then you'd get the best out of all the teams and they would fight to every single game. Like you'd get as exciting as like the Premier League. You would... On the last day, you'd go, who's going to win the league? Oh, my God, who's going to go down? It's exciting, man. That's what I think. I, they just need a, they need a relegation. Um, so that, I mean, that, that obviously creates a different environment at the top. What do, what do they need to do in Australia? I mean, we, we haven't produced a lot of players since the golden generation, as they, as they uh, keep naming or has been named. What do you think they need to do differently? Is there something they need to do differently? Or can you see the next crop coming through? Well, again, I mean, obviously, with me being over here and not being there week in, week out, it's very difficult to, to see what kind of crop of players that are coming up. I mean, the, the people that are handling the youth set up there, the people that are handling the young Australian teams, um, and obviously, I mean, Arnie, I know Arnie's handling it all. So he's the one that you'd have to ask to see what kind of crop of players that are coming up. And then if they're not, it, it annoys me when people say, let's get, you know, the next Mark Swartz or the next Harry Kuehl or the next Viduka or the next Tim Kale or the next... I mean, we don't need to create that. What we need to create is these young players being themselves, creating their own identity, working on seeing them as what are they good at. You know, you may get a, you may get a player that's actually not quick, but he could whip a great ball in, you know, is, is an absolutely unbelievable left winger. But teach him how to get into positions where he doesn't have to use his speed, but get him into a position where he can just cross balls in. You know, teach him things like that, that they, think they can become their own person. And then I think you can see a kind of progression. I mean, if we're constantly battling, you know, the, our best players to the best players that are coming up, you're never going to get it. I mean, look, are we ever going to get another Messi or Ronaldo? You know, when, when a kid turns around and says, well, someone says, oh, he's going to be the next Messi, I feel sorry for him. Because you just think you're never going to reach that height. Maybe you do, maybe. But it's going to be a height that's going to be untouched for a long time. And I just think if we just let them be themselves, you, they encourage them more to come out of and, and just express themselves. Is getting involved with the game in Australia, the future of the game, something that interests you? Would it be something in, in, at some time maybe you would be interested in getting involved with? We, we have to look at Australia and we have to make 
the right decisions in, 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 in every aspect. And I get asked this question a lot, you know, are you going to go back to Australia and help out and all that kind of stuff? Look, love to. But don't forget, even young Australians leave, the, leave our shores and they come across into Europe. So you still need something here as well to be able to help them here. Even if, let, let's just take Matty Ryan and, and Aaron Moore, even though they're doing extremely well, they still need help, help over here. Now, whether that's from their family or from another, even just speaking to even you or me, you know, could just help them in a way. So football is a global sport. You know, even though we need to get our, our system right to create our own identity, we still need to have people spread out all around the world to help these young players when they do venture, whether it's in Asia, whether it's in America, South America, Europe, we still need people there to help them there as well. Because it's going to be harder for them when they leave because they're not going to have their family around them. So they're going to have to need more support when they're, when they're out there anyway. Is that one thing that you found difficult when you first went overseas? No. No, not at all. I, for, I, I loved football. All I wanted to do was football. And I, like, I think there was one moment where I got upset um, was when no, my, you got upset more than one moment, mate. I've seen you upset loads of times. Uh, maybe after <laughs> losing games or something like that. But emotionally, when my family left for the first time when I was at Leeds, they they came over the first two weeks when I signed, and it was the day that they left. I got emotionally, and I remember at Ellen Road, my dad got in the minibus. He he doesn't cry, but I'm sure he did cry. My mum cried. She got around, I, I saw the minibus got off. I remember walking up to Fullerton Car Park. And I remember crying a little bit and I remember wiping away the tears looking back at like the stadium and going, this is it. I never looked back then. So who is your, uh, let's, I mean, that leads on to the next question, right? What does it mean to you if Liverpool will win the title? Well, they're going to win, right? Let's be honest. They're going to win it, right? Liverpool will win the title. Um, what's, it going to mean, what's it going to mean to you? Well, as a fan, first and foremost, I've been privileged enough to play for the club. I signed for the club to win the title. I, I, I miss that. Um, it's, look, we're not getting too excited. Like I said, we, we want to get it over the line and then we can kind of celebrate because the one thing you don't want to do is kind of say, yeah, 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 yeah. We, they, they've won it, they've won it. Look, anything can happen. You know, math, math, maths, maths tells me, especially <laughs> learning now, City can still win. Okay, so we're, we want to concentrate and get it over the line. But for 30 years, I think we've been in the shadow, you know, of other great clubs in this country. And I, I think now it's time for, for Liverpool to actually rise up. I think they've been rising for a while now. I, I feel since, I think the platform's always kind of been there since Benitez. You know, Julio had it, like he had a platform. He went on that amazing uh, trophy run. Then Benitez had a platform that kind of, put him into uh, Champion League spots constantly, winning Champions League, uh, Cups, been into finals. Then Brendan Rodgers come in, had that kind of different kind of uh, style of play that bring Coutinho and all these kind of people into the squad. Then uh, they had Royal Hodgson that, that, that brought in. And then now they've got Jurgen Klopp, who has taken a club with the investment in the right way that has, for me, like just been power lifted through the Premier League. And like I said, I can't see a lot of teams stopping like Liverpool. I mean, if you look at last year, what they'd done, you would have thought Liverpool would have had a slip up. But the fact that Klopp has driven more into them and they've gone and done what they've done is, is phenomenal. And you just, can't, you just can't see no one stopping them at the moment. Is he, is he the manager you would have loved to have played under? I can imagine he just would have suited you down, down to the ground. Yeah, um, you, you hear stories. You hear stories about what he's like uh, to the players and all that. And you, you hear a lot of stories, what the players talk about. He's like, he's like a dad, but he's my boss. Now, very rarely you ever get that as a, as a player that you would say, well, he's like a dad. I've never heard. I've never, I've never classed a manager as like a dad figure. Whereas some of the players at Liverpool have said, he's like a dad figure, but he's that boss as well. So that obviously he pays attention to detail to his players. And like... What I like about Jurgen Klopp as well, he's not afraid to say what he feels. You know, I mean, he's been pushed against a lot of things this year that a lot of people are not happy about, especially about the, the FA Cup and, and all that. And he's backed his players. Because the one thing a player doesn't want 
doesn't want is that a manager would say something and then take it back. Because it's like, well, hang on a second. You, you, you're giving me false information. And I think that when he says something, right or wrong to a player, I think they believe him. So whether he, if he's given them good information or a telling off, they take it as a constructive thing. But don't forget, he's also built quality players in there. Like you look at Milner, Henderson, Van Dyke. These are three strong characters, I believe, that I think run the dressing room. And I just think he's got a group of players then around them that are just abiding by the law. And it could get even better for you because your your other old clubs could get promoted and look like they could be uh, pretty much going to be promoted, I think, as well. Leeds United, how's that going to be? Leeds United back in the Premier League again. Well, for me, Leeds shouldn't be in the Championship anyway. They're too big of a club. They've got to be in the, in the Premier League and they've got to be fighting for Europa to Champions League. For these, for Leeds to be able to push for these next games, was it nine games they've got to play? I think it's done well because usually they have a little bit of a stumble towards the end. You know, the last you know year or so they've, they've stumbled. So I think this time here, he's, I think now he will have these revved up and with the 38,000 fans that they'll have, they will, I know they can't go to the, the, the stadiums, but what they will be having, they will still be there in force in, in the feeling that Ellen Road, that Leeds will push and it will be fantastic to see them back in the Premier League. Final question, mate. If, uh, just complete the sentence. If Brighton go down, Matt Ryan and Aaron Moy would be good signings for? Honestly, Matt Ryan, I feel, could play at any level. I think he's a fantastic keeper. Um, I think he's done wonderful. And like I said, I kind of see him like you. Like I said, he, he, plays, he plays for that team where he's doing a lot of work and he saves them a lot. You know what I mean? And I always thought like you could have went to that. You didn't in the end, but you could have at an early age gone to that higher, bigger club. I think Matty can do that. I think Matty can easily play in the, one of the top six clubs. And, and for, for Aaron, yeah, definitely. I think he's a... You'd have to pick the right club at the top level. I think he's definitely in the like top half of the the six that he could he could he'd be a great player to have in your team anyway. Excellent. Um, you know what? I, just the last thing I was going to say to you: you picked Mark Viduka in your uh, in your best team eleven, best teammates eleven, and yeah. I know that Michael Bridges is mate, having sleepless nights, crying that you didn't put him at least on the bench. All I'm saying. Well, look, don't 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 worry about that. I mean, the bigger one is is. You know, you were that close. <laughs> you, yeah, I, and, 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 and you know what? That is, that is the truth. And, you know, and I'll say the only way is, is because, yes, I, I probably played like on a longer span with you, but I had more of a concentrated time with Pepe. So I got to see more and more. I think if I would have played with you in a team, it would have been definite. So I had more, if you look at my team, it wasn't more of the internationals because you just can't pick because you very rarely played with them. Yeah. It was more of a week in, week out. I saw what you did day in, day out. So, but Bridgie always complains anyway. Yeah. So, no chance Bridgie getting the bench? No, not even anywhere near it? No. 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 That's no. what I thought. I, I thought no. he was average anyway. No. <laughs> no. He was very, he was very, no. He was a very talented, he was a very no, talented Don't give him a compliment. Player. Don't give him a compliment. Very talented player. Very talented player. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much My for pleasure. that chat.